This is a virtual talk by Dr. Jim Herring and it's based on a film from the early 1960s by Bobby Aitken. Hello, I'm Jim Herring and this is the third virtual talk that I've done for Dunbar and District History Society. And the talks have been passed on to other organisations and groups. This particular talk is about a film made by Bobby Aitken. And Bobby Aitken was the owner of Aitken's The Chemist in the High Street in the 1950s, 60s and early 70s. And it's about the lifeboat Margaret going to rescue a sailing ship, a yacht which is brought back into the harbour. This is the third film of Bobby Aitken's that I've added commentary to, and I'd like to thank Christine Mitchell and her brother Rob Aitken for giving the History Society these films. One of the films, the first one uh, that I put on YouTube, has had over 1,100 views. So this particular film looks at aspects of the lifeboat, the harbour and the castle. I'd like to also thank Gordon Easingwood and Ronnie Marr for giving me a great deal of help with this particular talk. So I hope you enjoy it. The photo shows the lifeboat Margaret, which arrived in Dunbar in 1959. And the photo is actually from a book which is called Dunbar 200, the History of Dunbar Lifeboat Station, 1808 to 2008. And it was written by the late Ivor McPhillips, who was president of the RNLI in Dunbar, for many years. And I'll just quote from the book about the Margaret, said she was the very latest Watson class lifeboat and boasted many of the technical refinements available to vessels of that era. Although not a self-writer, she was fitted with 268 air cases in her hull and equipped with MV MF VHF radio, direction finder, echo sounder, signal lamps and a searchlight. Radar would be fitted at a later date. With a length of 47 feet and a beam of 13 feet, she was a very stable boat and, in contrast to some later designs of lifeboats, she kept remarkably dry when at sea. She was powered by twin 60 HP Gardner diesel engines and was capable of 9 knots and a range of 280 miles. Steering was amidships, and thanks to the cabin design of the lifeboat, the coxswain and crew now had the luxury of protection from the elements. Now, the lifeboat Margaret was named by the Duchess of Northumberland at a ceremony in 1959 in the harbour. And if I can just go back to quoting Ivor McPhillips' book, he said, Her first few years were quiet, with steady but unremarkable services to small craft and fishing vessels, but in 1964 came her chance to get into the big time. The 7,000 tonne Finnish ship Ramsdale, which you can see here in the photograph, and it's a huge ship, went aground in thick fog at Peffer Sands. The Peffer Sands is from Dunbar on the way to North Berwick, and it's between Ravenshoek Beach and Skull Beach. So, the ship Ramsdale went aground in thick fog at Peffer Sands and tugs which had gone to tow her off were unable to locate her. 
Margaret, now in the command of Coxswain Robert George Brunton, found the casualty and stood by for the next 18 hours. During this time, Coxswain Brunton was able to advise the master how to float the vessel off the reefs at the right state of the tide. So this was a, uh, a rescue of a, of a ship, a, a muck-up ship that, that's gone aground on, uh, up, the, up the road from here. And uh, what is remarkable that, that the, the coxswain, uh, Robert George Brunton, was, was able to um, really rescue the ship cause, because if a ship that size had run aground and was not able to be refloated, or not given the right advice on refloating, then it could have been a huge environmental disaster. If you look at the likely crew of the Margaret on the day that the film was made by Bobby Aitken, it's uh, hard to be exact because it's uh, a bit blurred, the film, but almost certainly Robert George Brunton as the coxswain would be in the wheelhouse, and with him may well have been Andrew Smith and Bill Windrum. Certainly, for a reason, would recognise on the boat Xander Wilson, who was the bowman, uh, and Bob Marr at the back with the Southwester. Now, Xander Wilson's bowman had a very important role to play on the lifeboat, because if the lifeboat ever got into potential difficulties, for example, being near rocks, then the bowman would help the coxswain uh, to, to steer a course away from there. Okay, if we look at the picture on the right, and this is a lifeboat crew from the 1960s, you can see that on the back row there, there is Andrew Smith, who may well have been in the uh, wheelhouse with the coxswain. Then there's Harry Savison, an engineer, and Charlie Smith. And then in the front row, we have Robert Craig, Robert George Brunton, the coxswain, Walter Easingwood, Xander Wilson, as we mentioned with the bowman, and Bob Marr, who was at the back of the lifeboat. If we take a look at the photograph to the right of that, we can see that here is Bob Marr splicing sign the rope, or sane rope, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, uh, in the mid-1950s. And it's an interesting photograph, uh, partly because of uh, Bob Marr, obviously himself, doing the, the ropes, and um, but also his audience. Uh, there's a woman uh, in a dress looking quite fascinated at what he's doing and one of the interesting things in the 1950s was that people were much more formally dressed than they're likely to be today so this woman and possibly the woman on the right may well have come to Dunbar on a bus trip and that uh, visiting the harbour would be part of that bus trip. So Robert George Brunton was the coxswain from 1964 to 1979 and he was the third Brunton to be the coxswain. Uh, the first one was George Brunton from 1931 to 44. Then Robert George's father, David Brunton, who was the coxswain from 1944 to 1954. Now if you look at the photograph on the right here, and you can see that uh, there were one, two, three, four, five, six Brunton brothers who were all members of the lifeboat crew in the 1960s and 1970s. And if we go from left to right, we can see that the, on the left to right is there's Jimmy Brunton, Peter Brunton, Ralph Brunton, Davy Brunton, Robert George Brunton, Willie Brunton, and then Bob Marr at the right-hand side. And these were all Bob Marr's nephews. 
So in his book, the, um, Ivor McPhillips notes that the, the Bunton family had uh, crew on the lifeboat. At least one member of the Bunton family was on the lifeboat for the whole of the 20th century. So that's uh, quite a remarkable feat uh, on behalf of those, all those brothers and fathers and uncles. The first boat that we see in the harbour site uh, in the film is called the Yvonne Rezaga. And the Yvonne Rezaga was brought to Dunbar from Hartlepool by Peter Marr in 1958 and it was later sold to Davy Fairbairn. Now, Ronnie Marr has told me that he sailed on the Yvonne Rezaga later on and with his father, also called Ronnie Marr, and with two lifeboat coxswains. Uh, no White, who was known as Fid, and Robert Davis, who was known as Fuzz. Now, if we look at the photograph on the right here, we can see that there's the Yvonne Rezaga in the harbour, centre picture. And that if we look up to the right of the boat, of the harbour, then we can see that the large building there, this was the gymnasium for the army barracks, which is just behind. And it later became the Victoria Ballroom in 1963. And the Victoria Ballroom was famous in the 1960s for having very well-known groups such as the Bachelors, Searchers, and Dave D, Dozy, Beaky, Mick, and Titch. When I was doing my interviews for my book on Dunbar in the 1950s, George Gillen, George Togillen, who was a band leader, told me that they held dances in the in the uh, gymnasium in the 1950s and that it had one of the best dance floors in Scotland. And the reason for this was that it was laid by the army for the gymnasium. And so it was of very, very good quality. So if we go back down to the harbour, the boat on the left, the green boat on the left, of the Yvonne Rezaga was called Children's Friend and it was owned by John and Lawson Bizet. The white vessel to the right, the lower one, this was called the Dunbar Castle and it was owned by Peter Johnson, who was known as Boups, another nickname from the harbour, and he took adults and children out round the Bass Rock in the Dunbar Castle and charged five shillings for adults and half a crown, two and sixpence, twelve and a half p nowadays, for children. And it was very, very popular in the 1960s. So a really interesting photograph in terms of the harbour, but also in the background. And the picture itself is, is included here with permission of Trawler Pictures Net. The 
the other fishing boat that was recognised as being in the harbour when the lifeboat film was taken by Bobby Aitken is called the Avail. And if you look at the picture on the right, you can see that there is the Avail, the AH-122. Uh, it's not in Dunbar, Dunbar Harbour, but it's a good sized fishing boat and looks a very um, sturdy boat as well. Now, if you look at the picture um, to the right of that, you can see that the, on the left is the skipper of the Avail, Davy Brunton, uh, one of the, the Brunton brothers that was uh, on the lifeboat, and also another lifeboat man, uh, Bob Marr, that, that we've seen before uh, in, in this talk. And they are landing prawns in the early 1970s. And this was a very healthy catch of prawns indeed. Now, Ronnie Marsh told me this photograph was taken by Charles Van Leeuwen, who lived in Craig Villa, which overlooks the harbour. So I hope you enjoyed that presentation. Uh, it's a fairly short video about the lifeboat Margaret, but there are, I think, lots of interesting aspects of it. Uh, for example, the people up the castle that you can't see nowadays. So once again, I'd like to thank Christine Mitchell and Rob Aitken for giving me their father's film and passing it on to the History Society. And also to Gordon Easingwood and Ronnie Marr, and I forgot to mention that Joseph Ma had put some information online which I used to talk about the boats in the harbour. Now, I'm in my, my own living room and behind me you can see that there's a, a photograph, it's a, a panoramic photograph which takes in uh, the harbour and uh, other parts of uh, along from the harbour, in fact including our own house. So I hope that's a suitable, suitable background for you and that you enjoyed it.